But next, we meet the eco-designing team behind a fan fantastic new project that we'll follow over the next coming weeks. Looking forward to it. Speaking of eco-houses, architectural designer Darren and Sharon Hunter are about to get started on a job with a difference. Their latest house is going to be all about going natural. They are building an eco-house. Their clients want to escape the hurly-burly of the city and build something a little different out in the countryside. Darren has been given a brief to build a home that will be in tune with its surroundings and completely self-sufficient. Hi Darren. Hi Josh. Sharon, I'll lean Hi, over there. Wicked to have you here, but what the hell is an eco house? Well, an eco house is a house that uh, uses very uh, low energy materials. To, to, to create a house, you have to use a certain amount of materials, and some materials use a lot of energy to make those materials. Um, we're hoping to use lower energy materials, build a home for the clients that is warm and functions as a normal home. But more importantly, once the house is built, we want to have the house not using any energy from outside apart from what the house generates. And these materials, are they readily available? Are they easy to find? The materials are. You just have to be a bit smarter about um, and do a bit more research on where they come from, who's manufactured them, uh, what sort of energy has been used to create them. So they are readily available. Are they, does that come in? Are they costly? Is it, does it change the outlook when, you, when you're designing the house? It definitely uh, makes the house more expensive to build. Um, but we've come to a time, I think, that the building industry has become a bit more competitive in regards to those products. Uh, I've been designing 23 years and it's the first time in 23 years that I've felt that they're more affordable to, to everyone. In terms of the big picture, does it really make a difference? When you don't receive a power bill at the end of each yeah, month, okay, it okay. definitely makes a difference. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty, the plans, you know, um, and, and I guess the camping ground where it's all starting. Um, how did you get, come across that? The, the client was um, oh, from, from Wellington. It's an, as you can see, it's an empty site. They've owned the section probably two or three years. They've planted some shelter belts. Uh, it's four acres. There's, there's no, uh, no neighbours immediately in the vicinity of where we're hoping to build. The, as you can see from the photos, there's a water tank ready to go. But other than that, it's a, it's a flat section within walking distance of Martinborough. And so is this what the, the client wanted entailed in the plans, or have you been given a free, free ride? I've interpreted their brief. They've given me a written brief. Um, they've given me an idea of the size of home they want. And the sketches that you see on the, on the screen now are, are, are stage, uh, the third set of sketch designs that we've come up with. So it's an evolving process. The first set was um, tweaked quite a lot to, to get it to what they wanted. And the materials, um, what sort of materials are we talking? Are we talking about hay bales and things like that? That, that is, uh, from a more purist perspective, hay bales or rammed earth is definitely a, a, an eco product. We've gone for a more conventional build. We want to demonstrate that people can live in a conventional style house using conventional materials, but designed in such a way that it is eco. Sharon, um, Darren was talking about, you know, like energy saving, those sort of things. How will the house manage to do that? You know, if you're not plugging electricity, how are we going to... The clients that we're actually designing in, so it has um, solar panels on the roof, and so it will be collected, the power is collected through the solar panels into batteries and stored in the, um, you'll see there's an area on the plans um, for the, all of the batteries for the storage facility for oh, the power. Yeah. And the power needs are actually assessed and the amount of solar panels you have on the roof basically should be enough to run their home. So we've done an, they've done an energy kind of assessment, you know, how many times they use their um, appliances, their washing machines. He's actually a chef, so he needs to use a lot of power. Wow. In fact, a pastry chef, so he needs a lot of power. So it's not like the TV will go off. They don't own a TV, but um, the TV won't go off. They shouldn't run out of power. They should definitely have enough power to keep them through running their day-to-day -day life. And will they be completely separate from the grid, or will yep. they be a top-up? No, they're completely wild. separate from the grid. Perfect. Completely. Perfect. And what about the plumbing? I, I, I'm plumber's son, so I've got to ask this question. You know, are, you, are there going to be worms in the garden? Um, is it going to be that sort of toilet, or, the, or using burners, <laughs> or, or what? The, um, the stormwater is collected off the roof, obviously, for um, it's it's cleansed with a UV filter, so that water gets used back into the house. The actual septic, so in other words, um, showers, baths, toilets, the kitchen sink, all go into a septic tank. Now that septic tank will purify the water to a certain level and it'll be pumped into the garden to water the trees in irrigation fields. So the water is actually recycled and, and used to grow um, trees on the side. And so the toilet will just be a normal toilet like you okay. have in your house and I have in my house. Yeah. And then the overall look, you know, the cladding, you know, what, 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 will, what will it entail? The, um, the house has been driven by the, the predominant material that we've chosen. It's, it's going to be a concrete tilt-up panel house. Yeah. Now, the concrete 
as a lot of people may know, but a lot of people may not, is that concrete absorbs heat. So any heat that radiates into the house during the day then gets released at night as the, ha as the temperature outside cools down. So the house will have a, a very solid feel. It definitely won't feel like a concrete house, will clad walls with um, timber. So a combination of concrete and, and timber products. So it, it, they're not using a lot of recyclable products, you know, because that seems to be a bit of vogue thing too with these sort of eco houses, isn't it? To use like bottles and put them in the walls and things like that. It's all going to be new, new products? No, definitely not. Um, we are, we're discussing with the concrete manufacturers at the moment that the, the concrete itself will be using a product called fly ash, um, which is a, is a byproduct of the, of, of the coal burning process. Uh, we're looking at aggregates or stone that's been crushed from footpaths and roads that will be put back recycled. into the concrete, recycled. Wow. Um, broken glass, which will be crushed and used as a building material. So there's a portion of recycling in there, but you won't actually see it. It will still look like a very modern, contemporary house. Well, it sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to how it progresses. We've got 13 weeks of checking it out, so I'm, I think it's pretty exciting. So thank you very much.